In our last lab, we discussed the physical properties of metals. In this lab, we will continue our study of metals by exploring their chemical properties. As always, before beginning any experiment in the laboratory, be sure you are familiar with laboratory safety requirements. For a demonstration of basic lab safety rules, you can watch our video entitled Lab Safety. Other than their position on the periodic table, what do all metals have in common? Even though metals do not all share the same physical properties, they all share the same chemical properties. Chemical properties describe how a substance chemically reacts with other substances. To examine the chemical properties of a metal, we need to understand a little bit about the structure of atoms. An atom is made up of negatively charged electrons that orbit a nucleus containing positively charged protons. The electrons in the outermost sublevels of an atom are called valence electrons. Valence electrons are largely responsible for both the chemical and physical properties of metals. Atoms with their outermost sublevel filled with valence electrons are the most stable atoms. This neon atom has two inner electrons and eight valence electrons, which is a stable electron configuration. Now let's look at an atom of sodium and an atom of chlorine. A sodium atom has one valence electron. A chlorine atom has seven valence electrons. Sodium is an alkali metal from group one of the periodic table. Chlorine is a halogen, which is a non-metal located in group 17 of the periodic table. If a sodium atom loses its one valence electron in a chemical reaction, it becomes a sodium ion. Although the atom is now an ion, it is more stable because its outermost sublevel is filled with eight valence electrons. An atom that easily loses an electron in a chemical reaction is called an electron donor. Since a chlorine atom needs only one more electron to fill its outermost sublevel, it readily accepts an electron from a sodium atom in a chemical reaction. This causes the chlorine atom to become a chloride ion. Although the atom is now an ion, it has a more stable electron configuration because its outermost sublevel is filled with eight valence electrons. An atom that readily gains an electron in a chemical reaction is an electron receiver. Since sodium is an electron donor, it readily reacts with chlorine, an electron receiver, to produce the ionic compound sodium chloride. Sodium chloride is commonly known as table salt. Like sodium, all metals are electron donors, which is a chemical property of metals. They easily give up electrons to bond with electron receivers in chemical reactions. Another chemical property of metals is metallic bonding. Metallic bonding is the electrostatic force of attraction between the atoms of a metal. The electrons of a single metal atom orbit the nucleus in specific orbitals. For example, a lithium atom has three electrons, two inner electrons and one valence electron. However, when billions of lithium atoms join together to form a solid metal, their valence electrons are shared by all the atoms. These shared electrons move about in the space between and around the lithium atoms. The free valence electrons of a metal form a negatively charged region called an electron C. Since the valence electrons of lithium atoms are shared by all the atoms, Instead of individual atoms, lithium metal atoms become positively charged lithium ions, or cations. The attraction of the metal cations to the electron C forms a chemical bond known as a metallic bond. Metallic bonds hold metal cations tightly together in a rigid, crystalline structure. 
Metallic bonding is responsible for the physical properties of metals, such as luster, conductivity, malleability, ductility, high melting point, high density, and hardness. In their pure forms, most metals are not too colorful. They have a silver or gray luster. Their compounds are white or gray, and their solutions are colorless. But some metals produce compounds that are quite colorful. Copper 2 sulfate is bright blue. Potassium permanganate is dark purple. Nickel 2 chloride is green, and ammonium dichromate is orange. Even though some metals and their compounds are not colorful, they produce colorful flame tests. A flame test is a tool used by analytical chemists to detect the presence of metals by the color of light produced when a compound of that metal is held in an open flame. Suppose you were given a sample of an unknown compound to identify. By conducting a flame test, you could determine if the compound contained a particular metal. This would help you narrow down the possibilities for its identity. To hold a sample of a compound in the flame, we use a wood splint that has been soaked in water and dip the wood splint in the compound. We see that the compound burns with a bright red color. Compounds containing lithium or strontium burn with a bright red color. So we suspect that this compound contains one of those metals. Further investigation reveals that this is lithium chloride, so our flame test confirms its identity. What caused the lithium ions in a white compound to burn with a red flame? To answer that question, we need to look at the structure of a lithium atom. Let's look again at a diagram of a lithium atom with one valence electron in its outermost sublevel. When an electron of an atom or ion is in its normal energy level, it is said to be in its ground state. A lithium atom is an electron donor, so if it loses one valence electron in a chemical reaction, it becomes a lithium ion. A lithium ion is in its ground state because its electrons are still in their normal sublevels. When a metal compound is held in a flame, the metal ions absorb heat energy from the flame. This causes the electrons in the metal ions to jump briefly into higher energy levels. The two electrons in the lithium ion jumped into the sublevel of the second energy level. An electron in a higher than normal energy level is said to be in an excited state. Atoms or ions in an excited state are unstable, so the electrons quickly drop back into their ground state. When electrons return to their ground state, they emit energy in the form of light. The electrons of the lithium ions emit a red light. As long as the compound is in the flame, electrons will rise and fall and emit energy. The light emitted by an atom or ion returning to its ground state is the color we see during a flame test. We will look at flame tests for six more compounds containing metal ions. Then we will use the data we collected to identify two unknown metal compounds by their flame tests. The colors emitted by metal ions during a flame test are often difficult to describe. What appears as red to one person might appear pink or orange to another person. It will be up to you to describe each of the remaining flame test colors. We will be testing compounds containing metal ions of sodium, calcium, copper, strontium, barium, and potassium. You will need to record the color of each flame test on a table similar to this one. Pause the video while you set up your table. The first flame test we will conduct is with a compound containing sodium ions. How would you describe the color of the flame emitted by the sodium ions? Record the results on your table. Let's continue by testing a compound containing calcium ions. How would you describe the color of the flame emitted by the calcium ions? 
Record the results on your table. Let's proceed with the test for a compound containing copper ions. How would you describe the color of the flame emitted by the copper ions? Record the results on your table. Next, we will test a compound containing strontium ions. How would you describe the color of the flame emitted by the strontium ions? Record the results on your table. Next, we test a compound containing barium ions. How would you describe the color of the flame emitted by the barium ions? Record the results on your table. Finally, we test a compound containing potassium ions. The color for this flame test is sometimes faint and hard to see, but you can see some color in the edges of the flame. How would you describe the color of the flame emitted by the potassium ions? Record the results on your table. Now, we will use two of the compounds we just tested to see if we can identify them by their flame tests. Here is the flame test of the first unknown compound. How would you describe the color of the flame emitted by the ions in this unknown compound? Based on your observations, what metal ions are present in this unknown compound? Record the color and type of ions on your table. Let's perform the flame test of the second unknown compound. How would you describe the color of the flame emitted by the ions in this unknown compound? Based on your observations, what metal ions are present in this unknown compound? Record the results on your table. Let's see how your answers compared. In our next two labs, we will look at the properties of some non-metals. At this time, proceed with the corresponding activities. <music>